It was an ideological act of desperation to prevent a revolution that's already started. And that revolution is that with the democratization of media, we the people will become the storytellers, or at least enough of, we would have enough of a share of the media market that whatever they pay for, no matter how much they spend, no matter how much Paul Ryan's leadership spending is going to flow into our eyes through commercials and you know Fox News and all of that stuff, no matter how much leadership spending they use, we're not just sitting there with three networks with no role other than choosing among them. We're not just consumers of content now. We're producers of content. And the last four and a half years of my life are proof of that. And every single one of you has a sphere of influence, which I learned from Lowell. A sphere of influence through your, your email accounts, you might have Facebook, you might have Twitter. Anybody have any of those three things? <laughs> okay. That means you're all producers of content. That means you're all potential spreaders of content. That means is that if we all learn to interlock our spheres of influence, we can rival leadership spending. We can rival corporate power. That's why Annabelle and I are experimenting now with the copy party. We, you know, we started, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even look around. Uh, you have five minutes. Okay. So, we, Annabelle put this on her, I didn't even look at my notes either, oh well. So, <laughs> Annabelle put on her um, Facebook page, we should have a coffee party, right around the time when the healthcare debate was starting to look a lot like professional wrestling. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And by the way, as an aside, professional wrestling, news entertainment, and reality TV, have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? There's actually a character in that story who's been on all three. Can anybody name him? Yeah. yeah. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Before the path was cleared from reality TV directly to politics, he had to stop at professional wrestling. And he actually was on WrestleMania with Vince McMahon, the very same man who I mentioned, a big reporter, whose wife just ran for Senate in Connecticut. So this is all one show. <laughs> and you know what? We're getting tired of it. Oh, man, are we? We are getting tired of it, and we're beginning to create our own show. And that's what the coffee party is improving. So Annabelle puts this on Facebook, we should have a coffee party. And like before she even told me that she did this, people were creating coffee party chapters all over the United States because our previous projects have gotten Annabelle out of Facebook friends. So a few months later, here we are, and CNN is doing stories, and we're suddenly we're part of the show, right? Because the media likes to have two professional wrestlers who can, right? And so corporate media, the Koch brothers, Dick Army had spent so much money constructing a stage for the tea party, but it wasn't really, you know, they didn't have a complete action figure set right? <laughs> until the coffee party came along. So suddenly they were shoving us out on the stage and we hadn't raised any money, we hadn't gone through any planning. It was a YouTube, basically a joke. <laughs> but people are so hungry for something more authentic than Jimmy the Superfly Snooker versus Ray the Crippler Stevens, more authentic than Donald Trump versus Barack Obama. More authentic than, this might sound familiar, what do you think about the fact that Barack Obama is raised in a madras and wants a terrorist to win? Well, I studied politics for a lot of years, and i got to tell you, <laughs> the Democratic nominee for president was raised in a madras and wants a terrorist to win. It's very hard for voters to support that candidate. It's the same show. <laughs> so, Americans want something more authentic, and the web is where we can find it. That there's just a sea of just exploration and discovery and innovation, and it's happening so fast that when we created the coffee party about 15 months ago, things have been invented that have completely transformed what's possible for us. And what's really great about the fact that we have no Pope brothers, that nobody showed up with a tour bus to put Annabelle on it and take her around the country, that, that, that nobody showed up with an organizational plan, that we're actually nimble enough to weave through and find those new inventions. I just found out about this thing called Posturus, which allows me to, with one blog post, beam out information to all of the other Coffee Party Facebook pages that when they actually started, we were so dismayed to see. Now we're actually glad. 
because we're going to be able to start to create an information exchange between people in, in different parts of the country who uh, have local issues going to their Facebook page and then once in a while a national issue. Um, the Elizabeth Warren thing has been our latest. We're sending tens of thousands of letters to Congress. We're sending tens of thousands of letters to uh, Barack Obama. And the, the, I think the basic notion for me as a filmmaker is that there's a tremendous amount of power in the relationship between an audience and a person they see on the screen. As I was telling Lowell, there are people out there who actually took the time to learn Klingon because they love Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how it was that 40 million people watched to see who wins a dance contest, or a singing contest or something. People sit there and they, they bring their fingers to figure out which of three people is going to make it across a platform before a windmill knocks them into a pool. What if we offered them a new kind of show where the characters are like Annabelle Park, not getting paid, not trying to win a prize, just trying to participate in a democracy as a Korean American immigrant to learn English better than most people speak it as native speakers. And the investment is not to vote for something or to vote for a candidate or to, to spend money at the Capitol Center. The investment that the audience feels is, I share those goals and I want to help you achieve those goals. So that when Manuel puts something on that Facebook page, 20, 30,000 people respond and write a letter to their congressman. That's power right there. And you know how much that costs? Nothing. The YouTube videos that I didn't show you, because I wanted to say this, the average price of my YouTube videos are $2. It's the tape. And because I recycle the tape, it's less than that. <laughs> so my, my main message to you is that these guys have the solutions, but none of that's going to really be possible unless we, the people, pull those spheres of influence and learn how to start winning this narrative war, which, you know what, we're winning the narrative war. We're beginning to turn the table, you know, as, as these guys mentioned, the election on Tuesday, what's happening in Wisconsin. So I think that we just, we know what the narrative is, and the door is now open. It's no longer about uh, give me your $30 million to buy a news channel, please. Right? It's do you care enough to learn these tools? Because, you know, posturous, I don't know it, but I, do you, I took the time to learn these tools. Do you care enough to learn these tools to increase that spirit of influence wide enough to reach the next person, you know, who's, who's, who's in that same universe? Um, and, and that person connects to the next one. And just to give you a little bit of hope, because of 9500 Liberty and a little bit of the coffee party, the way that I um, make my living is I speak up at colleges. And so I go around the country, especially in the spring and, and, and in the fall, and I meet young people who already know these tools. They don't have the knowledge that you have. They don't have the knowledge that these people can share with you, but they are digital natives. They know these tools. And so if we can find a way to start connecting those spheres in an authentic way, so it's really about people communicating, people sharing ideas, don't, don't fall into the trap of it's the Democrats versus the Republicans, or it's the whites versus the Hispanics, or it's the conservatives versus the liberals, because that contributes to the other of the two big problems that the Coffee Party tries to address. The, the first one is corruption. We've talked a lot about the cycle of corruption, right? You have money for lobbying, the rights laws, uh, then money for advertising that creates that uh, chilling effect, and then, and then that, the policies that you get in return increase your profits, which then you can invest in that influence. That's what we call the cycle of corruption. Well, the other problem is disengagement. And one of the ways that we can improve, we can address the problem with disengagement is, 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 is new media, social media. And the other one is to just kind of take a step back and, you know, Coffee Party talks a lot about civility. Because uh, that was one of the things that most offended us about the Tea Party and also what happened in Prince William County right before that. That it was a deliberate toxification of, the, um, of, of civic discourse. So that people are illegals, you know, or so people are socialists because of what they think or because of the color of their skin. And what that does is, yeah, it does, you know, and people can do that from the left as well, it does kind of rile up a certain base, but what it also does is it really alienates the 
average person. It really makes the average person not want to participate in the political process. So I really believe that the, the, what March talked about, you know, in, in the last 30 years, that's about the same time that professional wrestling became journalism, became reality TV, the, 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 the three pillars of news entertainment. That's about the same time when it merged, and I think that we need to not allow ourselves to get drawn into picking one of the professional wrestling characters or picking one of the news channels where the good guys and bad guys are, you know, they're basically characters in the story, aren't they? Can I just see them again and again? Well, if we find a way to um, engage in the political process, not necessarily by um, getting on one side of the fence and throwing stones or bricks at the other, but trying to remove that fence and having um, a dialogue that's based on, on, on facts and on wanting to transcend partisanship, then I think that that could be more attractive than the angry circus, the big show that I was making fun of before. Thank you.